right now, more than ever before, the word trauma is front and center in conversations in education. Trauma. It is the weightiest and the flightiest of words. Heavy with the certainty of hurt, loss, pain, despair, violence, yet afloat on a breeze of ambiguity of meaning. I'll posit we don't know what it means, and yet we're using it in schools as if we do. And that is where the peril lies. But we'll also get to the potential. What is the peril in focusing on trauma in schools? Well, let's start with us. You, like me, may have experienced tragedy, loss, grief, pain, and struggle of the various kinds life can visit on us humans. For some of you, like me, some of that hard stuff may have occurred in childhood and you carried it into school. But if you, like me, live in a certain kind of body, white, economically secure, heterosexual, a gender identity that no one ever questions, speaking the language that's the dominant one in your society, well then, you like me were probably never assumed to be cognitively and emotionally damaged by the hard things that happened to you. I hope you got empathy. But you may not have experienced that particular kind of pity that makes you the deficient them to the more normal us. If you don't have as many of these layers of privilege, you no doubt know, viscerally, that feeling of being not quite who school was designed to support. The hardest stuff can happen by virtue of living in fragile human bodies. But humans are also very skilled at inflicting trauma on each other. And not just individuals but trauma inflicted through policies, systems, and institutions, including schools. And that brutality is aimed at some much more than others. We see how that works each and every day on our screens and in our earbuds now more than ever. Here, though, I want to consider how well-meaning take-up of trauma in schools becomes one more way that certain children are unjustly targeted. In the current take-up of trauma in schools, there is often a focus on the neurological and psychological damage trauma wreaks on children. And guess what? The protagonists of that story of brokenness are far more likely and unfairly to be students of color or children facing poverty. How do those stories of damage take hold? Well, let's look at some of what appears in searches of trauma and schools. Consistently, there are images telling stories of impaired children. And those messages are appearing on slide after slide as a key to understanding the impact of difficult experiences. Those messages, presented as facts, take hold <coughs> even when they are defied by the brilliance of children we see each and every day in classrooms. Seeing too many of these, that can make it harder to see the child. But, you might ask, these images can be useful tools, right? It's trauma. It does have impacts. Does require all the supports we can muster for children. Well, yes. We must provide supports. And an image of a brain, a pyramid, they convey information. We might imagine how they could help us absorb the stakes of the injustices that are so baked into our society and our schools. But if these are what you see over and over, you will see damage when a child is identified as traumatized. To be useful, we have to shrink these images and fill our senses with the knowledge and the insights children carry from their lives into classrooms. That is the potential of trauma. 
we can move away from pathologizing messages and move toward supporting children to use the whole of their lives to connect to school. That's what teachers, children, and I have designed and explored together in literacy classrooms for more than a decade. By the time Sonia was writing poems about her brothers in second grade, she had been removed from her home, no longer had contact with her biological parents, no longer lived with her three oldest brothers, and was living in a foster home with another brother who was two years older. When learning about poetry in her classroom, she seized the chance to write a collection of poems, each with a brother's name as its title. She included the just right details that brought those brothers to life and made her loss so deeply tangible. And in the last one, about the just older than her brother, a boy I knew from his year in second grade in this same teacher's classroom, the year of his cancer diagnosis, she captures her terror of losing this brother too permanently. And listen to how another child, Laura, describes the story of her uncle's deportation. I need to tell you something, she writes, drawing her readers into her confidence. I heard my uncle say something to my dad. I thought it was going to be something good, but it was not so good news. She captures the police sirens, the workplace raid, the bars of the jail, and then the absence of her uncle's arms full of presents in the Christmas doorway, his joy when it was tamale making time, and the additional absence of her aunt because she left to be with him. Sonia and Laura convey traumas inflicted on children through adults and through systems. And Sonia and Laura's writing and the hundreds of other examples I could share did not just happen. Children feel when topics from their lives, including the hardest stuff, are invited in school and when they are not. As we've worked to reimagine school writing in light of trauma, we've learned how to make those invitations clear through teachers sharing their own hard stuff, not equivalent experiences necessarily, but the loss, the longing, the pain, the confusion that opens a door and says all aspects of life matter to what we do here, that says you are not damaged, your brain is not defective, you are full of knowledge that counts in school. And we see children using voice and details, imagery and metaphor, the tools effective writers use to hook their readers and convey their ideas. And their teachers, they actively critique the messages well-intentioned policies send about children. They see how those messages fall on some children more than others and they take action and advocate for children outside of the classroom. And they deliberately, thoughtfully turn toward trauma as powerful pedagogy in the classroom. So yes, this word trauma is perilous in schools and it holds potential. Children know how to make their lives a vibrant source and resource for their learning. Let's put the brain scans down and let them soar. Thank you.